It's a bit of a cliche to say that wine is made in a vineyard, but it really is. This is where the quality of the wine will come. You can't add flavor to the grapes. There's all the precursors are in there already, and it's all just about revealing them with your winemaking techniques. The climate in England's marginal. You can make amazing wines here, but you need the correct sites. Soil's important, but in a marginal climate like England, this comes down the list in comparison to aspect, altitude, topography. It's all about the microclimate and not just the macroclimate. You have to have everything right in your vineyard to be able to grow quality grapes in England year after year. It's not like wheat. You can't just start again the following year. What you do the year before will have fundamental implications to what will happen the next year. From bud break onwards, it's the viticultural practices that will determine this quality of fruit that you get. One of the most special things about growing grapes in England is the long growing season. Because it's not too hot and because we don't have frost really until mid-November time, not here on the coast anyway, you are able to have the grapes develop more and more flavour. This is what's known as hang time. The longer the grapes are on the vines, the more flavour they're going to develop. A Lime Bay winery, the grapes are picked by hand. If you pick by machine, you pick huge quantities of grapes in one fell swoop and you have to process them straight away. So picking by hand, you're able to pick small parcels of grapes whilst they're at their optimum ripeness. If there's botrytis for your sparkling wines or if there's high levels of botrytis in your backers, it's easy to remove this. With sparkling wines, you're looking for neutral flavors and high acidity. For still wines, you're looking for complexity of flavors and the development of precursors in your grapes. When the grapes arrive at the winery, if it's for a sparkling wine, they will go into the press as a whole cluster. If it's going for a still wine, especially if it's Bacchus, it will nearly always be crushed and distemmed. This involves removing the stalks and then gently crushing the grapes. We're releasing the juice, what will then have more contact with the skin. The skin is where most of the flavours are in the likes of Bacchus, and we want to extract as much of that as possible. So after the crushing and the stemming, the grapes go into the press and we'll macerate them there for three, four hours, sometimes slightly longer. What we're also trying to do is avoid oxidation of the flavors that are in there already, the, the precursors. We're wanting to maintain as much purity of that fruit as possible. This is a pneumatic membrane press. It's got a membrane on the inside which fills with air. It fills in incremental pressures. So if you imagine having a bunch of grapes in your hand, you squeeze them gently to release some juice, and you squeeze them a bit more to release some more juice. It then can turn around and turn the grapes. Because if you were to keep squeezing these grapes in your hands, there's only so much juice you'd get out. You have to rearrange them and then press them again. For our sparkling wines, it's all about maintaining the quality of the juice. We don't want to extract flavours from the skin. It's all about being able to display the secondary fermentation, the autolysis of the yeast. So to do that, we want delicacy. The best way in doing that is to treat the grapes with as utmost respect as you can. We whole cluster press, so the grapes go in with their stems, and the press extracts the best quality of juice to begin with.
For the sparkling wine, we use three different grape varieties, Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier and Chardonnay. They all have different characteristics, they are all picked at roughly different times, and although they all stand by themselves, they can also be blended into a wine together. They marry very well. The purest, most delicate juice that you can get, which we call the cuvee, it's the juice that is released first. The reason we want to obtain the cuvee for our sparkling wines is it's the juice that has the most delicate neutral flavours and the highest acidity. During harvest we're testing the, the sugar levels, the acidity, pH, the yams and the malic acid levels. Wine can mean things to different people. It can be alcohol, it can bring back memories, it can be a sense of a place, it can give you an idea of tradition. I think with English wine, for me, it's about exploration, it's a discovery, there's an excitement about it. We're at a new frontier here, there's nowhere more exciting in the world making wine than England at the moment.